Hello and welcome to the SBK Betting Podcast. Our usual host, Jess Stafford, is living her best life over in LA this week. I'm extremely jealous. So I'll be presenting the show alongside SBK Betting Podcast regular, the brilliant Ross Miller. Now, we're fresh off the back of the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown, featured eight grade ones, numerous Cheltenham Festival clues. But before we get into that, it's time to heap some praise your way, Ross. You tipped a wonderful Weatherby, Nap and Next Best double last week, courtesy of Ruby Island and City Chief. The double ended up paying 13 to 2 starting prices. But if you watched last Thursday or last Friday, you would have got around 10 to 1. So, yeah, very well done. I bet you were pleased with that. Yeah, I was. Um, I was mentioning someone earlier in the week, actually. I mean, Ruby Island was really well found in the market. I mean, I think she was sort of 15 to 8, at least 13 to 8, opening up and went off 8 to 13. And I don't know what you think, but I, I don't like that when I'm when I'm tipping with, I'm backing one, it's quite a nice thing to see the market move them so dramatically. But when you're, when you're tipping, people only look at the SP. And if you tip a, a 13 to 8 on winner, big deal, of course, it was going to win. Well, then you find that. And if it gets beat, you look like a right, Charlie. So I was pleased to see her get it done. And I do actually think she's a very progressive mare. You know, she looked in a touch of bother just turning in and then picked up at the home straight. I think she's a nice mare for Mark Wolf, who's done really well this year, and particularly when she goes over further. Yeah, she was really impressive. I actually followed her early in the season when she got beat a couple of times. And I didn't back her last week, so I learned my lesson there. Um, Ross and I also tipped State Man, who bolted up in the Irish champion hurdle. I was personally shocked that he went off odds against her around six to five. I thought it was uh, going to be a certain odds on shot given her uh, honeysuckle's regression going into the race and he, her handily beat Vauban in the Matheson hurdle the time before. But no, he proved to be good value at short odds, which does exist, despite people thinking that it doesn't. Um, other winners at the DRF included New Ballymore player, Good Land, uh, Gold Cup favourite, Galapande Champ, and now the bumper contender, Fun, Fun, Fun. Willie Mullins won eight of the 15 races, just utter domination, though a few of his short price horses did in fact lose. Um, Ross, I'm going to give you a list of horses from the DRF. I want you to pick three that you're keeping on side for Cheltenham and three that you won't be backing at the festival. How does that sound? Go on then. Yeah, I like that idea, TC. Cool. Right, so here are the horses. Lossy Mouth, Appreciate It, Dysart Dynamo, Bambridge, Galapande Champ, Mighty Potter, El Fabiolo, Blue Lord, State Man, Honeysuckle, Vauban, Vassal Vega, Gaia de Manil, Gaelic Warrior, Statler, go. Okay, so three that I'm, I'm definitely keeping on side. Bambridge, yep. I thought that run in the in the Irish Arca was really impressive. I couldn't see him getting anywhere near that close. I think going at that pace is going to stand his jumping in really good stead for the test that comes. I think he, Mighty Potter is the, the big horse for the Turners after the uh, Dublin Racing Festival. But I thought Bambridge for me was absolute standout. Another half mile on that hill. I think he's going to love that. Galloping Deschamps, I, I was really keen on him all the way through last year and then just had him as a gold cup horse. And then when I, the hype settled, I started to look at it and think, can a horse that's this free actually stay the gold cup trip? And I actually got a bit cooler on him into the early part of the season. But I really liked what he did uh, last weekend. I loved how he just dropped the bible, popped away, conserved energy. And I think he found plenty from the back of the last to the line. Um, I, I, I think if you're knocking him you're standing on fragile ground now. I think he's looking more and more like the real deal. Um, and then another one is another Willie Mullins horse, Al Fabiolo. Probably would have been my third pick, actually, in the Irish Arkle. Um, but there was no fluke about it. Made a big jumping error and still put away probably one of the best fields of the of the weekend. I don't see how either Appreciate It or Dysart Dynamo turn that form around. I'm ever the optimist, and I just wonder whether Danny Mullins now he's had a spin on Al Fabiolo over uh, on Dysart Dynamo over fences, given how well he got Gentleman to me to settle on a front running ride. And I think that's Danny Mullins' you know, real strong point. If he could find a breather into Dysart Dynamo, maybe he'd get a bit closer. But I think Al Fabiolo is going to give John Bon a real good go, although I think John Bon's superior jumping might just hold sway. Then, so that's the three that I'm keeping on side, three that have offside and the first one is lossy mouth i've never actually been all that keen on her for the triumph i think she's a quick horse i think triumph winners are thorough stayers um so i was always more in a blood destiny camp so i'm hardened on that opinion um i think she didn't get the run of the race she's had a hard race but also she did get out and get time and having closed she then couldn't close again so that just confirms to me that she's perhaps not laden with utmost stamina I'd be keen to stay against her. Blue Lord was just B 
bitterly disappointing and is starting to create this profile now of a very sort of in and out character. So I'm not all that keen on him. And then Gerard de Manil, who was my first anti-post bet way back in the summer for the four miler or the national hunt chase, the nearly four miler. Um, I'm getting a bit cool on him. I just think he's a bit of a bit of a rogue. I don't think he puts it all in. I think if Patrick Mullins wins the national hunt chase on him, he'll have earned his uh, riding fee. Um, so yeah, those are the three that I've got cool on since Dublin Racing Festival. Very interesting. I uh, I wouldn't be against anything you just said there. My three that I want to be keeping on side, Galapande Champ, as you say, Stamina looks to be more assured now. Uh, and he's definitely the horse to beat in the Gold Cup. Banbridge, completely agree with everything you said, will be much better over a further uh, longer trip. And as we've already touched on in the Cheltenham, uh, Cheltenham anti-post preview, we both fancied him for the Turners, and now he's a lot shorter than when we put him up. Uh, and Statler is the other one I want to keep on side. Thought he stayed well uh, late, home, late at home in the day there. Uh, and although Gallop and Deschamps may prove just a little bit too good for him at Cheltenham, I think he's still a great each-way alternative. The three horses I definitely want to avoid Number one, Gerda Manil, 100% agree. He's just a horse that really struggles to win. I don't see how he's going to be winning the National Hunt Chase because he doesn't like winning. He doesn't want to put his head in front. Vauban, for me, lacks a sparkle. Uh, last year, he was really good. This year, I don't think he's elite. and that, Therefore, he's not going to be able to beat the elite rivals he's going to face. And uh, the last one is Gaelic Warrior. Now, I know this horse has a huge engine. Uh, he's clearly very talented. And he's probably going to be a reasonably short price favourite for wherever he goes. But I'm just worried about that jumping. I really am. And because he's going to be a short price favourite, there's going to be no value there. And I'm happy to oppose him come Cheltenham time. Right. Let us know in the comments below. Out of all those horses, hopefully you managed to hear uh, all of them as I quickly listed them off. The three that you want to be keeping on side for the Cheltenham Festival and the three that you will not be giving a second chance to. Ross and I will be interested to see your thoughts for sure. OK, on to matters at hand this week. We've got a, a race to preview, and that is the Betfair Hurdle. Newbury's got the feature card this week, and the Betfair Hurdle is the showpiece event. We're expecting good ground at Newbury. Uh, it's currently good uh, right now, but also the weather forecast just seems to be dry and sunny throughout the next couple of days. We're filming this at 12.51 right now on Thursday afternoon. So we're currently expecting good ground to be uh, the play of the day at Newbury. Um, and that could favour some horses and not favour others. So make sure you do look at past performances um, and see whether horses like quick ground or soft ground. Three favourites have won this race in the last decade, including Bally Andy in 2017, Al Dancer in 2019. But there have also been a fair few shocks, including Glory and Fortune last year at 20 to 1. But that wasn't a shock to you, Ross, was it? As I watched this podcast from 12 months ago, you put Glory and Fortune up that day. Given, his re given your recent success in the race and his recent success in the race, it's only right that you go first with your selections. Are you going to be backing him again? Yeah, I am TC, um, and largely for the for the same reason I think I put up last time, which is last time I thought he brought the best form into the race, um, you know that Christmas hurdle form that he had then, um, and I think the same stands stands true again. You know, eight eight lengths fifth uh, in the champion hurdle. It might not have been a van vintage champion hurdle, but I still think that was a, a decent enough performance i thought his fourth in the welsh champion hurdle he wasn't beaten all that far they finished the first four finished in a bunch that was off a mark of 153 beaten three lengths um by sort of milk wood and severance you know they're, they're decent horses in those sort of two mile handicap grades on on good ground um they've tried yet again to go back chasing tom lacy is a very proud horseman you know he takes great pride in doing things properly um he does a lot of preschooling and getting horses to jump and I think he was pretty confident he'd get this horse jumping sooner or later and it, it just hasn't happened for whatever reason to me he just looks like he doesn't enjoy it um but his, his hurdle mark has come down now he's five pound higher than when winning this last year that's worked out really well I like to move it was a joke a beaten a short head off um five pound allowance he was getting from uh, glory and fortune he's 152 the third horse first street is also 152 was three lengths and uh, two pound back i think that's really good form i don't see anything uh, in the race of this level the fly in the ointment is and i think if you're a bookmaker it must strike fear into you mustn't it you know uh, emmett mullins in jp mcmanus colors i mean th this filey bay could be anything but if you're backing it you're going on a combination of colors and trainer um, and that's just for me never enough to take a short take a short price. Um, there'll be plenty of people if he wins that will say, well, of course, you know, it was obvious it was a 
plot job and all the rest of it, he's got to improve on what he's done. This is a much tougher race uh, at, at a short price in the big field. I can avoid him. I will just give a mention to, to one other that I, I do like, and it's largely ground dictated, and that's restitution for Alan King. Uh, Alex Thorne keeps the ride. Um, he travelled like a really smart horse at Doncaster last time, you know, had everything off the bridle going to the last, found plenty after the last. He won a, a maiden on the flat on good to firm ground at Yarmouth. This drying ground is going gonna, gonna to suit him really well. He's up £11 into a much better race, but the ability to travel and jump, which he has, will stand him in good stead. And I think he'll certainly be there at the death. It's just how good his engine actually is. But those are the two for me against the field. So Glory and Fortune is currently 22 to 1 at the time of filming. Restitution, even bigger price at 33 to 1. Um, I like the fact it's not just heart overhead for Glory and Fortune. There's there's clear logic there. And if he does record back-to-back successes in the Betfair hurdle, when you're on both times, then it's some feat. And I'll definitely be giving you kudos this time next week. Um, as you've touched on, Filey Bay is the horse that I think everyone's going to be talking about when they preview this race, when they're looking to see who they want to back in the Betfair hurdle. Just because we don't know enough about him to for him to warrant support at around three to one. From a punter's point of view, when you're looking for value, this horse is the epitome of terrible value. And the reason for that is that he's such a short price and he hasn't proven yet that he's well capable of beating a field like this. However, that comes with caveats, as you've already touched on there, Ross. He's trained by Edmund Mullins, one of the best placing trainers around at the moment. Now owned by JP Manis, picked up the horse since his last run. Uh, J.P. McManus, very shrewd operator, as we all know. I don't need to go on about his uh, CV and resume over the years. And the fact that last time out, if you go and watch that race, you can only see about 50 yards of it because of the fog at Wincanton that day. We can't even look back at that form and go, you know what, this horse is really well chucked in. Uh, he won with a stone in hand. You couldn't even see the race aside from Richard McClernand almost pulling him up close to the line. So he's a horse that's very difficult to judge. And if he's currently around three to one, uh, or going to go off 3-1, to one, then I think he's got to be taken on, despite the fact he could easily win this race. We just don't know how good he is. Um, judged on RPRs alone, and I know people don't like this, some people do like this, he'll need to improve around £15 pounds to, to be an average winner of the Betfair hurdle over the last 10 years. So that is some significant improvement he'll need to show. I like to at a big price. It's not going to be a, a race where I'm going to you know, go in reasonably hard. I think it's a real tricky heat. I like the fact that Ross has put up two uh, outsiders. I'm going to put up two more, um, both each way. The first is Oakham Risk, who switches back to hurdling after a stint over fences. This horse developed into a good hurdler last year, recorded victories at Plumpton twice, Wincanton and Kempton, where he won the grade two dovecut. I believe he was still improving prior to his switch to the bigger obstacles. And although that hasn't necessarily gone to plan this year, I think his hurdle mark of 138 remains really workable and the switch back uh, will see him better light. He's around 14 to 1 at the time of recording. And the other one is 20 to 1 shot, Master Chewy. The main reason for putting this horse up is that Nigel Twiston Davis has won three of the last nine renewals of this race. He tends to target one of his novice hurdlers here that's reasonably well treated. And I think Master Chewy fits that brief. Um, he ran reasonably well last time out when second. The race wasn't run to suit. And I think this big field will definitely see him. Uh, in better light. So that's the Betfair Hurdle, the feature race this weekend. Um, there are a couple of good chases on the Newbury card too. The Grade 2 Game Spirit, the Grade 2 Denman Chase. Um, while there's also racing at Utoxeter, Nace, Lingfield, Warwick, where Love uh, uh, Envoy and John Bond are in action, so make sure you tune in for those races. And Wolverhampton, little plug here. If you're looking for tips for Wolvo, make sure you tune into Sky Sports Racing, because I'll be in the hot seat alongside friend of the show, Luke Elder, covering the whole card. I presume you won't be tipping it at Wolverhampton, Ross. Um, who's your napper next best this week? No, I've I've steered clear of, of Wolverhampton, and I think you're a very brave Liverpool fan to uh, go near Wolverhampton TC after <laughs> last weekend, I think it was. Um, I, I'm sticking to what I know, and that's Utoxeter. Um, the nap is in the 245. Fergal O'Brien trade Dublin 4. He stayed on really nicely last time uh, at Doncaster on his first try at three miles, where... He was probably given plenty to do by Keelan Woods. I think in in his defence, I think he was making sure the horse got home over the trip. He ha- kept hold of him as long as possible. And then perhaps the the race had gone, but he stayed on really nicely. Liam Harrison takes over, takes three pound off. Liam Harrison is a rider I really like. He is particularly special, I think, at hold up rides. Um, if, you, if you get a spare minute, go back and watch a ride. He gave a horse called Timberman at Kempton, which... 
I mean, I've, I've watched it a couple of times back and still can't quite believe he won. He was coolness personified. He must have given them 20 length head start and picked them up nicely. He does it time and time again. He's going to suit this horse down to the ground. His three pound means that uh, Dublin four carries 10 stone 30 on his back. I think that's a really nice racing weight. He's going to love the ground. Plenty in here. I don't think I'm going to want it quick. And I think it might get quick throughout the day. Um, so he's the nap. And then sticking out, you talk to for the next best. The Kim Bailey trained Say Adam. Um, I thought he stuck to his task really well at Taunton last time uh, behind two nicely handicapped horses, uh, American Sniper and uh, Forever William. Uh, he was off the bridle a long way out, stuck on. That was over two mile three and on a sharp track. I just don't think the track suited him at all. Now moves up to two mile four and you talk to a more galloping track. And Kai Lenahan taking over, takes seven pound off. He moved to Kim Bailey at the start of the year from Oliver Sherwood. Uh, he's being used quite sparingly, but he's riding at a 43% winter to ride rate, which is pretty impressive. And he's looked very composed on the times I've watched him. Um, if the horse has been, you know, in with a shout, he's not lacked from the saddle. So um, those are my two uh, at Utoxeter. No prices yet, uh, as I say, we're filming on Thursday afternoon, but make sure you check the uh, markets on SBK on Friday afternoon when the prices go live. Ross is napping next best. Just to repeat, Dublin 4 uh, in the 245 Utoxter and Say Adam in the 320 at Utoxter. My nap uh, goes at Newbury. I actually really wanted to go to Lingfield again for the flat, but uh, this week, after so many places, by the way, had a diligent Harry loss uh, last week to a nap, but right, I haven't got over that. Um, oh, we'll stick to the jumps. We'll go, we'll go to Newbury. Uh, my nap is going to be Eldorado Allen in the Grade 2 Den Denman Chase, 2.25 Newbury Saturday. Market will be headed by Hitman. He's a horse I just don't want to back right now. He's uh, got plenty of questions to answer. I, I don't think he's the strongest in the finish. I think he's pretty soft. Um, he also bled last time out in the King George. Comes off a layoff. Paul Nichols has subsequently given all of his horses a flu jab, and some aren't running well, some are. There are a lot of questions there with Hitman and at a reasonably short price. I think he's around seven to four at the time I'm, I'm speaking. Um, I want to be taking him on. And I think Eldorado Allen is a worthy opponent. The Tizards have won this race four times in the last six years, including last year with Eldorado Allen. This looks to be the target. The race setup looks kind. He could get to the, to the lead again, much like he did 12 months ago. Cheap pieces are added. Uh, which should elicit further improvement and help with his jumping, as he can be a little errant going left and right. And I like the return to better grounds. El Dorado Allen is a confident nap selection in the 225 at Newbury. And the next best is in the, the race before that, the preceding race at Newbury, the 155, and it's Jetta Louie. Now, this one comes with risks. Most notably, he hasn't won a race under rules since November 2019. So there's a long drought there. He has subsequently won a point-to-point -point in 2020, I should add. Uh, but he's only had seven starts under rules since that last victory in 2019. And his mark has come down from 148 to just 135. Good ground is crucial to him. So I put a line through his last time out effort on bog-like conditions when loads of horses didn't finish their race off very well. And it also provides me with a little bit of solace that Tom O'Brien is taking over from David Maxwell in the saddle, despite loving Maxwell for his enthusiasm for the game, as I'm sure you do as well, Ross. Um, so SPK's current offer is bet £10, get £10 of free bets for new customers. So if you like any of Ross's selections, which I'm sure you do, given his recent form and his history in the Betfair hurdle, uh, or my own, then make sure you head over to the App Store, download the app, and you, you're basically there. Uh, TNCs do apply for the offer, as always. Thank you very much for watching the SBK Betting Podcast. Again, please remember to subscribe on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, um, and just don't miss a show. This podcast runs weekly. We've also got uh, Cheltenham Festival Antipost previews. There's two currently live uh, on YouTube, but there's plenty more to come over the coming weeks. Uh, we will have an NFL podcast for the Super Bowl, which comes up on Sunday. Make sure you check back on Friday for that. Uh, and we've also got ep episode one of Tips is on Tour, where Ross and I were fortunate enough to go see Sam Thomas and his uh, operation down in Wales. Uh, so that's available to watch now. Best of luck for your selection this week, Ross and everyone at home. Let's enjoy some more good quality jumps racing. Cheltenham Festival is only a few weeks away, so we're just gearing up for that. Jess will be back in the host seat next week. And until then, be lucky. 